So, hello everyone. I will talk myself and Jay Vek is an R&D NLP engineer in Sber Devices, Moscow, Russia. So this presentation is devoted to the paper Morph Call, Problem of Syntactic Content of Multilingual Transformer Models, which is a joint work with uh, Alex Yerikov and uh, Ekaterina Artemova. So transformer language models have demonstrated uh, state-of-the-art results on a wide range of NLP tasks in multiple languages. And why these models are so impressive and what do they know about language? The majority of the model analysis methods aimed at answering these questions are based on the concept of uh, probing tasks which allow exploring um, which kind of properties are encoded in the representations of these models. Previous research is predominantly devoted to English and unfortunately, uh, little remains known for other typologically diverse languages. Specifically, the phenomena that um, lie at the juxtaposition of different language levels, such as morphology and syntax. To fill these gaps, our work proposes MorphCall, a probing suite uh, that consists of uh, four to six probing tasks for four languages. Russian, French, English, and German. So the suite comprises of four groups of tasks that um, cover different morphosyntactic properties. And inspired by the idea of linguistic acceptability, we <clears throat> propose uh, a group of tasks called perturbations that consist of different uh, syntactic and inflectional perturbations of the sentences. And using these tasks, we apply three problem methods uh, to conduct the analysis of four multilingual transformer models, including their distilled versions, which are also underexplored. And finally, we study the effect of fine tuning for post tagging tasks on the model knowledge. So we now describe the data that we used for the problem tasks and the tasks themselves. For the data, we use sentences from the universal dependencies tree banks and applied a set of manually defined linguistic rules to consider the specifics of each language. Note that our methods can be extended to other languages. Uh, let us move on the problem tasks. The first group of tasks probe the encoder for the presence of a particular morphosyntactic feature in the target word. And the example is trace the task for the category of number in the Russian language. Note that um, due to syncretism that some languages may display, the ambiguous forms are expected to be solved with the help of the context. The next group of tasks is analogous to the previous one, with the exception that the target word is now masked with the tokenizer specific token. And this setting is more complex since the encoder should rely solely on the context. And morphosyntactic values is the third group aimed at to classify the target word by the value that a morphosyntactic feature can take. Uh, consider the example on the slide where the goal uh, is to identify whether the word girl uh, is in the singular or plural form. And finally, the perturbation tasks uh, test the encoder sensitivity to syntactic and inflectional perturbations. It should be mentioned that uh, the quality of the perturbation generation procedure is controlled with the help of language specific rules. Hi everyone, my name is Katya Artemova and I'm with the Harris School of Economics in Moscow. I will talk you briefly through the experimental setup of this project. We have opted for various pre-trained multilingual models. Two of them are very popular. These are multilingual BERT and XLMR. These models were trained using different objectives and over different data sources. Additionally, we have leveraged the distilled version of multilingual BERT and the less known model MiniLM distilled again from the multilingual BERT, but this model uses XLMR tokenizer. Each model has two instances for each language, a pre-trained model with frozen rates and a fine-tuned model for post-tagging task for the target language. 
We have chosen to use three introspection techniques. The first one is a standard logistic regression. It imports word representations and predicts the word's property from a given inventory. For example, such a classifier can predict whether the word is singular or plural. In this setting, we are seeking to evaluate the performance of such a classifier. The second technique relies on logistic regression too, but this time the model inputs word representations from all layers concatenated in a single vector. Now we are more interested in the model's weights as they show what layers have a more significant impact on the property prediction task. The third technique is an unsupervised one. It is based on canonical correlation analysis, allowing to identify layers of the models that perform similarly based on CLS sentence representations. So let's have a look at the results. The results for the morphosyntactic features tasks demonstrate that pre-trained models perform slightly worse than their fine-tuned versions. We find that the awareness of the properties is distributed in a very similar manner despite the language differences. And the probing classifiers show very similar probing trajectories uh, for all tasks with the exception of the category of person. The mask talking tasks appear to be much more challenging than the previous group of tasks. The probing performance of the fine-tuned models can drop uh, specifically at the high layers that are most affected by the fine tuning. So we can guess that uh, the knowledge about some properties may get partially lost. The overall pattern is that the middle to high layers receive a prominent performance with the XLMR model achieving the best results. Uh, besides, the probing trajectories tend to be unstable on these tasks, increasing or decreasing across the layers. The individual neuron analysis helps to observe how top neurons uh, are spread across the entire model and identify the relevance of each layer by the number of these neurons. The overall trend is that the sensitivity to the perturbations tends to be distributed across all layers of both pre-trained and fine-tuned models. And the exception is provided again by the XLMR model, which stores the knowledge at the middle to higher layers. We can also see that uh, the fine tuning affects the localization of the properties. Another interesting observation is that uh, for the majority of the tasks, the knowledge for English is uh, distributed across all the layers of the models in contrast to other morphologically rich languages. We apply the property-wise neuron analysis to investigate the number of top neurons per each uh, morphosyntactic property. We find that some models require a larger group of neurons to learn a property for some languages, and the number of these neurons may get changed after fine tuning. Due to the limited time resources of this presentation, we refer the participants of the conference to read our paper for, for a detailed analysis of the results. Thank you. To conclude, we have designed a new set of problem tasks, more of course, which can be used with multiple introspection techniques to probe pre-trained language models. We have achieved such results so far. First, the knowledge for English and more morphologically rich languages is distributed differently in different models. Secondly, as expected, different models exhibit different patterns. For example, Oxalomar is less prone to perturbations. At the same time, distilled models almost copy their teachers' behavior, so it seems fair to say that such models inherit knowledge from the source models. Finally, fine-tuning for post-tagging affects problem classifier performance and changes the localization of the properties. This opens a few research directions for our project, including proper investigation of how fine-tuning affects the models. Of course, our approach can be extended to other morphologically contrasting languages, and this is another part of future work. Thank you all for attention, and we're happy to answer any questions.